Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Conversations in Pop Culture. I have with me the big bad kaiju, O'Shea Edwards. So welcome to the show. I appreciate it big time. Appreciate you. Yeah, I am super excited to have you on. And according to your Twitter, you're sort of the last of the dying breed, especially during COVID-19. And not to put you on a hot spot here, but for those who don't know, and it's public, so I don't think I'm embarrassing you too much, but you just made a big adult decision and bought a house. Yeah, man, bought a house. This is the second time I bought a house. This is my second (laughs) house. My second house. First house I bought is literally when I came back from overseas, uh, literally like six months later, I bought a house. And so this one, this one is a solid upgrade than my first house. Um, and with a solid upgrade becomes a, um, a solid upgrade in mortgage note. So <laughs> there's, there's also that, but you know, it is what it is. My family's happy and I'm happy that my family's happy and you know, it, like wrestling's not forever. So it's one of the things where I'm having to, um, you know, put forth the right steps, put the dominoes in place. So when one falls, they all fall exactly where I need them to. And I think that says a lot about where you are in your life and your pro wrestling journey. And I kind of want to talk a little bit about that because you yeah. are the primetime heavyweight champ, 194 days and counting, which might be a lot counting. more. It might be a lot more for, for COVID-19 is on your side, which is the heel yeah, thing. Sure. It's the heel thing to do. It really is. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. It's one of, you know, people's like, oh, these don't count. I'm like, well, if it doesn't count, come do something about it. Oh, you're not? Well, guess what? I guess they count to me. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I'm just like, yeah, you know, I- I'm going to take it the way I can. So <laughs> I can't be too mad at it. But before we get into all that, I do want to talk about your journey. And your journey kind of started in Georgia, Atlanta a mm-hmm. while back because mm-hmm. that's where you started wrestling. And you started wrestling for places like Pro South Wrestling and Pro Wrestling Ego against guys like Baby Vega and Danny Adams, Ray Fury, Chip Day, as well as Reloot Reloot Wrestling. And you might correct me on that name against Brett Eisen and a few other people. So down south, Midwest area is very different than northeast and DMV wrestling. And so what was it kind of like getting down there and really – breaking into the business that way well um so you know started like in 2015 um my very first trainer is was was uh johnny swinger who's now a part of impact wrestling um guys he really it. Got, he's like their secret sauce yeah. down there he really is yeah yeah he is he is man and, and i'm so happy to see like like John, guys like johnny swinger like who still get that 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 chance to show that they can still go despite what people want to think. Like at the time, his biggest video was him getting like dusted by like Goldberg. And I'm like, yo, he's more than just some squash guy. Like Johnny Swinger can go like, I'm, like he can go. Um, but e- eventually um, even Johnny, t- eventually like I, I was able to link up with Robert Gibson, uh, maybe like a year later. Um, and I got that through, um, I got that with Johnny's blessing. Cause he, his whole thing was like, look, um, I can't teach you everything. And he goes, I'd be very egotistical if I said that I could. Um, he goes, Robert knows a lot more about wrestling than I ever will. So he's like, please go do that. You know, he's like, just don't forget about me. You know, just come back and see me every once in a while. And I did, you know, all that good stuff. But, um, you know, we had a, you know, working with Robert was really good. Um, working in Georgia was slow. Um, it was really slow because at the time it wasn't about like what, you know, it was about who you knew. Um, so I tell people all the time, the best, the best thing that ever happened to me was Georgia telling me no at the time. Um, cause once, once Georgia told me, no, I had a decision to make either. I could say, Hey, screw it. I'm a close up shop and like, man, and then blame Georgia, you know, blame Georgia like for whatever. Or I can just like, all right, I tell you what, man, um, I'm going to just leave, leave the state and then see what I can get. So that's when you get, um, that's when you get like the pro South was, was one of the very first place I could be a part of, 
um, then you know came pro wrestling ego, then Resolute out in Tennessee, um, which turned and then from there it just starts to snowball into its own little thing to where now um, you know I'm making these four day trips like from Georgia on a Thursday, Alabama on a Friday, uh, you know Jackson Mississippi on on Saturday, and then driving to Nashville on Sunday, then coming back home again. Um, and here's the thing, I love those times man that's the one thing i miss the absolute most is like the drives um there i tell people all the time there's something therapeutic uh about those drives where you can just kind of like ah and you just kind of you just kind of focus and do what you got to do and this that and the other and you just you, you know and then by the time you get there you're like all right man let's go get it you know you do your show you make some new friends whatever then you're back on the road again man so um and then from there, like I said, I, I was able to go into the Midwest. Um, I, I was able to, like, you know, hit up some places place like Glory Pro, um, which I absolutely adore, uh, adore, adore those guys. You know, um, you know, a few places in Illinois here and there, bounce around, da 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 da, da but really just get a chance to get out there and uh, get my face known a lot more. And um, so far, so good. You know? <laughs> yeah, and, and to talk about that, because... I would say that 2015, 2016, and even 2017, you were starting to build up steam, but really started breaking out in 2018 and in 2019, mm -hmm. kind of put that nail in the coffin. And the three promotions yeah. that did that were Southern, Southern Underground Pro, which is mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. rustic and so like bare bones, and so many people have come yeah. out of there yes. now. And you were there sort of right. at the beginning. And I was speaking to Manders on Monday, and you know, he started to come out of that too, that place. Mm -hmm. Action Wrestling, as well as the mm -hmm. Scenic, as well as Scenic City Invitational is another one. Mm -hmm. And ju just to go through some of these matches and some of these people, right. I think people are gonna know. We got Gary J, AJ Gray, Kerry Awful, Calvin Tankman, Trip Cassidy, Brett Ison, JD Drake, Anthony wow. Henry. You know, the lynch mob, Kurt Stallion, to keep going, as well as Jada Newman in many ways. And then just, just to talk about action wrestling, you got Matt Tremont, Warhorse, and Daniel Maccabe. We're sort of involved a little bit with him. Just, just to name a few names that people will know. So what was that like? Yeah, I never sat there and really, um, like – thought about it before until you said it. and i'm like wow i it's pretty much I the main did. stables on the indies pretty much pretty much yeah, i was like i i did i did wrestle those guys yeah 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 um <laughs> and and here's the thing like and and this is something i tell people all the time is i as many people want to say like oh man like O'Shea's on this level and you know and there's people who say he's on the verge of breaking out he just needs that one match or whatever I I still I still get in awe when it comes to people like Matt Tremont and Kurt Stallion and Warhorse and Chip because when I was coming in like these were the guys that I looked at you know these are the guys I wanted to like I don't want to say be like but I want to be on their level and while people say like, oh yeah you're on that level to me I'm just like am I though like really like I'm I still feel as if I'm just a guy trying to make it. So when people go like, yo, man, you're this and you that, I'm like, man, get out of here with that, man. Nah, I, I, when it comes to wrestling, I'm as much as we all have egos, like I am very, very humble because I know in an instant it's all gone. Like I could step wrong, blow a knee again, and, uh, and it's gone. You know, I can get one too many concussions and it's gone, you know, or just whatever. And it's not anybody's fault. It's just that's the way life is. It can go away. Um, so every time I get a chance to be in a ring with or be in the same building with people like that, man, it it means a lot. And I and I never want to be complacent about my place in life. So, yeah, I've been in the ring with, you know, Tremont and all these other guys and this, that and the other. But it's like I want more because I know I can do more. And 2018 was a blast. And I thought. 2018 couldn't get any better and then 2019 hit and i was like oh snap it does get better okay um and at the time 2020 was really ramping up to really put 2019 to shame unfortunately 
there are some outstanding events that happened, and well, we all see what happened there. But even still, um, I refuse to let that be a uh, a crutch. I, I refuse to let that be a uh, I, I refuse to use it as an excuse. You know, it's one of them things on Twitter I've been putting out. Like, hey man, look, this is this is wrestling's extinction level event here. Either you're gonna die because you just couldn't adapt, or you're going to evolve. And be greater than you ever could be before. And you needed this event to happen. Like as much as it sucks. It, don't get me wrong. This blows. But you need something to this magnitude to happen so that you can understand who you are, where you're going, and what you want to be. It's all about evolution. And if you can't figure it out, well... So yeah, you go by the way of the dodo, you know, you, you can't adapt, you can't overcome. So you die, you know, it, yeah, come off as a little harsh, but I'm not lying. <laughs> you know, I'm not lying <laughs> about it. So, you know, even though I can't be in a ring, I'm still finding new ways to evolve and, and adapt to what's going on. And when, when this is over and this will be over, but when it's over, I'm going to just, you know, I'm coming out of the gates hot because like everybody now is. No matter how big of a lead you had before, everyone's at the starting line now. The race has now started all over again. How hard you come out the blocks is going to be on you. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but I definitely want to talk yeah. about Matt Tremont because that match was yeah. insane. First off, just, just to give some, some background here, was that, that was at Scenic, right? Yes, yes, that was day two. Day two. So, so, so action and Scenic I think, took place in the exact same area and arena that weekend. From my understanding. Um, so, so action puts on what's called the futures tournament, which is yeah. the afternoon of day two. Yeah. Scenic City is usually around that Chattanooga area, while action is kind of like South Atlanta area. But the the the, the guys in charge of that place kind of run like intertwined yeah. with one another. So, 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 so a lot of the guys you see on action, you yeah. may see in Scenic City so, and vice versa. So, so just just to give some some positions here and why this match was fantastic this match did not start in the ring by any stretch of the no. imagination no i don't know who came out <laughs> no. where i don't know if you came out coming off of so, the bleachers or matt tremont came and then like both of you like just ran into each other and were fighting all over right it's an amazing match because you got these two big guys going at it and they're gonna kill each other you people are gonna kill each mm-hmm. other and just to say this, and not any disrespect to Matt Tremont, but this is, was done professionally in a safe matter, or as safe as it could be. So I want to make that clear. I want to make that well, clear. Um, so initially, what happened was the way the, if you can imagine like a high school gymnasium, right? The basketball floor, and then we had like seats around the ring, and then you had the bleachers. But there's kind of like a balcony area because the way the gymnasium is built is kind of like on an incline. So when you first walk into the arena, you're actually on the second floor already. So the, there's kind of like this little walkthrough that kind of goes around. So you're always looking down. So he popped up there. So no one knew he was up there until he starts, you know, start like grunting and all that stuff. And I didn't know he was up there until someone told me. He's like, man, Tremont's on the balcony. I'm like, why is Tremont on the balcony? And they're like, and everybody kind of goes, uh. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to have to go get him. So <laughs> music hits, and I see him up there, and I just look, and I just go, you son of a bitch. And I just run up there. He meets me halfway, dude, and we just start throwing hands at one another. Um, it, I, it was one of those things where I tell people it wasn't pretty. It was not a pretty match, but I tell people all the time, I was like, when was the last time you ever been in like a true fight and it was pretty, you know, I'm <laughs> like, it's, it's not pretty. I was like, but did, did it get the job done? Yeah, you're damn right. It got the job done. That's really all I care about. Like, did I, did it win? Did I win? Yeah, I don't care. I don't care how it looks as long as I win. Um, so working with Tremont was fun. Um, you know, that was, that was a real good time. Um, I've always had the utmost respect for him already just for everything that he's ever done for the business and getting a chance to share the ring with him was something that like really, um, took the cake that night. Like it was one of my, it was one of my favorite matches, not so much because it was like this technical powerhouse of a thing. It was mainly because of the fact that like 
the story it was such such a solid story that you never knew you needed until you saw it. Like it, it's type of people times people goes, I never knew I needed that match until I saw it. I'm like, yeah, that's what we want to do. <laughs> and also just from a fan watching perspective, or at least my opinion, it was nice because it broke up the show and it was unexpected mm-hmm. and it was like, oh snap, this is our fight because the matches before that, because Daniel McCabe had a match and that was a real technical match. And that's a treat mm-hmm. to watch mm-hmm. also. But seeing a real fight and running up and you guys throwing each other in the bleachers and then fighting down to the ring was a nice sort of breath of fresh air. And from, yeah. from a show standing, from, from a planning perspective, that was amazing. And it was great because it actually broke up the pacing of the show and it made everything else different. And it made your match different and it popped off. And that was a nice right. touch on it. And I don't know if you realized that when you were doing uh, it, but yeah, looking back. It wasn't until, it wasn't until afterwards. Um, I usually don't watch the shows directly after you like give it a little bit. They give me some time to compress and whatever. Then you go back and watch it again. Um, and then when I go back and watch it again, it was exactly what it needed to be. It, it, it was placed perfectly. And that's, that's, that's all testament to like the, the guys over at Action, the guys at SCI who, who really – they, man, those guys stay up day and night trying to put this thing together, trying to put people in the right place, trying to make guys shine to the best of their abilities because they'll put you in the position that you need to be. You shining in that point, that's going to be on you. Um, and I like to think that when my number gets called, I can deliver re- regardless. You know, a lot of times it's, it's not so much it's like, you know what you need but it's what you want i mean it's not so much what you want but it's what you need and so i like to be that guy who delivers exactly what you need on a consistent basis again and again and again um some people like to knock on me sometimes saying that oh i only work short i was like man i only work short because they only asked me to work short you know my i think my longest match has been like 18 maybe 20 minutes but half the time i don't have to not because i don't want to it's just like that's not needed of me so i don't you know I'm like hey man you got like five minutes i can tell a story in five minutes i tell a great story in five minutes you know i always leave want something more you know so i show you what i can in five minutes and if you like it i'll be back for another five minutes i'll show you the rest of it and if you like that then give me 10 minutes i'll show you more <laughs> you know so there's a there's a lot there's there's depth to me as a wrestler um i don't like showing everybody what i can do in the first go around just because you won't have me back anymore. You've seen it all. <laughs> and speaking about another memorable moment, and hopefully I'm taking a leap of faith here when I say it, you got to work with Stevie Richards down in Act. Yeah, man. And yeah. obviously Stevie is great. Anthony Green speaks very highly of Stevie Richards. Mm-hmm. And I would imagine that he was great with you and your match as well and working with an yeah. WWE legend type. We worked. Yeah, we've worked twice, um, once against them and then once on the same team. And I love working guys like Stevie Richards because they do so much with so little. And that's not a knock. It's just it is what it is. You know, it's one of the things of Steve's I can take one element of a match and then he stretches it out to this whole thing. And you're just like, I never even thought about that before. And. Um, get and also, chance, like, just, he's just one of those brain. guys. He's also one of those guys that still cares, and he's not just yes. interested in a payday. You know, there, there are certain wrestlers, and I'm not going to name who, but certain people demand big paydays and put in minimal effort. And Stevie is not right. one of those guys. From what no, I hear, he is definitely not one of those guys. Definitely, def, definitely not. Like I'll, I'll fight you for that one. Like Stevie's not that guy. Um, so the second time I got a chance to work with him. Um, like I said, just get, just to listen to him, like structure things and put things here, this, that, and the other, while still allowing, um, guys to individually be themselves meant a lot. And, and so for stuff like that, you know, like I told him, I was like, I was over the utmost appreciation because he didn't have to, he just took up the whole thing and what, what the hell was I going to say, you know? Um, but for, for him to give me that opportunity to shine shine and like to like still get myself over and all that good stuff man it it meant a lot to me and now we're gonna kind of leave sort of okay south and the midwest a little bit because you moved away from Mm -hmm. georgia and you relocated to the dmv area 
Yeah. And so what prompted that move for you? Uh, well, back in 2016, um, I was like maybe a year in, um, Ring of Bonner was giving out like their little tryout camp seminar type deal. Um, and it was something I wanted to do because at the time I, I felt as if I wasn't really getting a lot of like love in the South. Um, at the time I was still fairly new. So I, I had, I had no, you know, no reason to think that all oh, people owed me anything, but I was like, okay, look, if I, if I want to make it and be successful, let me rephrase that. And everyone's level of success is different. You know, not everybody want to make it to WWE. Not everybody wants to go to AEW. Some guys will just, Hey man, I just want to ring of honor and I'm happy. That's success to them. But for me, I knew I was going to have to figure out where I stood against everyone else. Cause eventually I knew I was going to have to leave the state like to make it. Like I knew I'd leave the South, I should say to make it. So, um, I spent two days out in Philadelphia at the ring of honor, um, little facility and I just put it out there. I mean, I just put it out there getting scrutinized by some of the best, um, in the ring with some of the best, like guys who are on the roster now. Um, and, uh, after my last day, they pulled me aside and he was, Hey man, look, uh, you just need more time. Um, this isn't a no, this is a not yet. That's all it is. That's what you're doing for the camera. Like keep doing that. Um, but as of right now, it's just a not yet, like give it some time. We will be keeping our eye on you, but give it some time, then come back and see us. So, like, after that, man, it, I am the living embodiment of finding another gear. You know, like, if, if a transmission only has four gears, I had a fifth one, and I found it when I came back home. Um, and so, like, 2016 ran into 2017. 2017 ran into 2018. And like I said, just killing it, killing it, killing it. And then, lo and behold, they give another one out. Now, this time it's in Baltimore. They have their own dojo now. And I put in for it. I was like, nah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm putting in for it. Like, you're not going to, you're not going to deny me this. Like, I want this. So I get up there and uh, I kind of look around the room. And I was, because at the time, no one else from Georgia was making these type of trips. It was just me. Um, and it was one of those things where I looked around the room and I was like, I don't know what you guys, I don't know what you guys came here to do today, but I came here for a job. And for two days straight, I busted my ass like as I mean, hard. Um, at the end of the camp, they pulled me aside and they were like, hey, man, look, um, you have one of the strongest weekends I've ever seen out of anybody for as long as we've been doing this. Um, as it stands, we'd like to offer you an uh, offer you an invitation to come up here, train with us, um, you know, really get that coat of polish on. And then, you know, if if things open up, things work out. We got a place for you. Um, I came home that night, told my wife about it. We talked about it for a few days and she was like, hey, if this is what you want to do, then guess what? We can't uh, we can't do this half assed. Like we, we got to push all our chips on the table. At the time, I was a fireman for 15 years. Like I had my own firehouse the whole nine. So I was the man in charge up there making a decent living. Wife's making a decent living. We had a house, you know, all that good stuff. And um, I was like, are you sure? She's like, I'll follow you anywhere. And I was like, OK. Uh, I think like maybe uh, I got a, I got at the time I got another job doing like some construction work, whatever, put our house up for sale. Five days later, it sold. And like two weeks later after that, we packed up everything in a U-Haul and a truck and just moved to Baltimore. And that was April of 2019. And I've been up here ever since. Got a new job that kind of pays me a lot more enough to pay for a new house and all that good stuff. Um, so uh, but since then, I've, I've come into the DMV looking to like to prove a point really when it comes when it comes to wrestling yeah and before we get to the dmv i do want to throw yeah. out one <laughs> moment in 2019 because and by the way that is an amazing woman that you have to keep happy clearly <laughs> but yeah, her, having said that house, so she's very happy now i bought her house so she's very happy now it, it's it's her house and you have a right to live in it that that's how it's pretty good it's her house. I'm just paying for it. That's it. <laughs> but there is one moment we have to talk about. And I don't know the exact yes. moment it happened and what promotion it happened in. But I think it's and I think, you know, the moment I'm talking about. And it was during Mania Week where you did a moonsault. So so <laughs> for, for those who, who have never seen O'Shea, O'Shea, just 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 I'm going to describe you a little bit. You're a very That's tall fun. man. You're a very muscular man. 
you have tree trunks for legs. To put it bluntly, <laughs> you should not be on the second turnbuckle, let alone the third one, and you oh, should not be able to yeah, do a yeah. moonsault. <laughs> and clearly, it's this amazing moment. And I think everybody's reaction in that was, holy fuck. How is this possible? Oh, how is this possible? So, what? <laughs> explain a little bit where that took place and what it okay. did, because it kind of so, broke the internet a little bit. Right. So, um, after the Ring of Honor camp in October of 2018, um, QT Marshall had a school in Atlanta. And at the time, they were kind of affiliated with, uh, with Ring of Honor, but that kind of like went away. No big deal. Um, they were like, hey, I don't know where you're training at now, but um, get with QT, uh, work something out with him, and just be there. Just be there until it's time for you to move. I was like, okay. So this is October. So you're looking at October, November, December, January, February, March, like seven months. I was just in QT's building like two, three days a week, just there, 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 there. Um, and he had a crash pad. And uh, January one day, I was like, hey, how do you do a moonsault? I, said, I think I could do it. I just never really had the gumption to try it. So he kind of told me, hey, man, just, you know, do a backflip. And I looked at him. I was like, man, listen, I've been an offensive line in my entire life. Nothing about 275 pounds screams. Just do a backflip. But anyway, um, I'm pretty I'm pretty agile. I have pretty good body control. So I just go on the top rope. And I said, screw it. I just sent it. I just went and did it. Um, and it became a point. Like I said, I, I filmed it in January. That's the one that's kind of pinned to my Twitter because it's the, it's the prettiest one. And um, it was one of those things of once I did it, um, like I say, it, just, the, just, the, just the practice run alone to me broke my Twitter page for a little while. Because people were like, why is this guy doing this? And like even to the point where like QT was like, hey, man, like some people have seen this. I'm like, we meet some people. He's like, you know, guys like, you know, the Bucks and the Rose, like they and Cody, like they've seen it. They're trying to figure out why I'm teaching guys your size how to do moonsault. And I had to tell them that it wasn't me. He did this on his own. Um, but he said, but do me a favor. Like, don't film this anymore. Like, don't put it up there anymore. Just let it, let it ride. He goes, don't show it again until mania. I'm like, that's the thing. I had every intention of waiting until mania. Um, it was my very first mania weekend. Um, I literally quit my job the week before. Um, so I'm just floating on a dream right now. Um, my dad was there. It's the first time my dad's ever seen me wrestle, ever. Um, and he got to see me do a moonsault. And so everybody was like, you're doing this moonsault, right? I'm like, I've been working on it. Yeah, we're going to do it. He's like, cool, we're going to do it here. And I was like, bet, we're going to do it here. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, I, I was very, very happy the way that worked out. And one of the craziest things, and correct me if I'm wrong, that show was, I don't want to say it was empty, but the only people that were at that show that it was done at were really true hardcore wrestling fans. It was witnessed on IWTV and all that right, fun stuff. Right. And a lot more people saw it watching it. You know, I, I took off the mm -hmm. week from work for WrestleMania week yeah. and watched like 19 shows. So, <laughs> yeah. But, 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 but what was that like knowing that a huge amount of people were seeing? Because that, that, I guess, arena slash place that all those matches were taking right. place maybe held 200 people at the most. Uh, no, 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 no. It held a few hundred when, when packed, like, cause you had the floor, you had the stage and then you have an upper deck that goes around it as well. So you're looking at maybe 700 people and I'm really kind of like ballparking it just by eyeballing a little bit. It's hard to and tell. That's like, it's hard to tell. Right. But, this, but, but it can, I know for, you can put 500 people in that building and everyone's comfortable. I'll put it like that. Um, honestly, I didn't, at the time I didn't even think about it. It never crossed my mind. Um, when I wrestle, I have this tendency of like putting, I don't want to say blinders on, but I, I don't, and lose focus is not the right word, but I blur everybody else out. I hear them, but I blur them out. Like I don't pay attention to them. Like there's moments where if I'm outside or whatever, I have, I usually like, I create these little moments with people, you know, I kind of goof off and then I get back in the range or whatever. But for the most part, I never, I never really sit there and like stare at people. I hear them, but I never stare at them. Only, only, only time I actually focus on one person is when I saw my dad. Like I knew where my dad was sitting. Other than that, no one else mattered to me. Um, the f I didn't know that many people were watching until after the fact. I was like, "Yo, man, all these people saw this." Da, da, da. I was like, "For real?" They're like, "Yeah." And my first words in my mouth was, "Cool, <laughs> okay, like, all right." 
uh, what's next? You know, I'm like, okay, cool. They saw it, whatever. Um, so, um, it was, it was fun to do. Uh, I've done it maybe like one more time after that and I haven't done it again. Like I still go out there. Like if I go train, I'll still go out there and like just flip off and just, just for my own sake, so make sure I still do it. Um, but for the most part, man, yeah. Um, people ask about it and I'm like, ah, uh, uh-uh. uh, you, you're not, you're not getting that one today. You, you got to pay me for that one. <laughs> And now that to me was the solidifying moment of your breakout year in so many mm-hmm. ways, because I think leading up to it, I think that's kind of just like the top of the mountain that was, was your breakout. And you could call it a breakout year. You could not. But I think that really solidifies it. And now I want to talk about the DMV, because I think the DMV okay. is very new. It's very attractive yes. as a wrestling fan. You know, there's discussions in my personal life of me moving away from the DMV. And the reason I don't want to move away is that wrestling is becoming very interesting in this district, Mm -hmm. in this area. Yes. Very interesting. And so there's a bunch of promotions. There's PAWDWC, which is sort of new Mm -hmm. and everything's going on with them. And they're they're in their infancies. There's Flying Mm -hmm. V and there's Primetime Pro Wrestling. So let's talk about mm-hmm. prime time first. All right. So how did you get introduced and called up to prime time? And they have a relationship with Action and Gator and Lolo know what they're doing right. in that company. They so, know. so prime time was more of a and, – and I'm probably going to butcher story, which means Lolo and Gator are probably going to kill me. They're going to kill me too, so don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> But I guess that was more of it. That was more of their brainchild filling in the gap that Nova Pro left a few years prior. You want to tell the Nova story? Well, the the Nova story, I barely even know myself. I knew I was booked to be on that show, and then they fell out for whatever reason. Like I said, not my story to tell. I'll fill in the blank a little bit. I'll fill in the blank a little bit with what I know. So they were having some type of economic problem of not paying female wrestlers yes. and we were speaking before and I'm not going to about wrestling and how small the wrestling community before we went live right. and wrestling community for those who don't know is very small in which had a very few small. piss off one person you could bet that that a that hundred wrestlers know exactly who you upset and know some variation of that story Yes, and then on top yes. of that there was issues of possible sexual allegations I don't know about that and then the guy kind of just burned too many bridges, and then they collapsed. Yeah, eventually, it, it was one of those things where it was it was easy. It was easy. The the best move was like, yeah, I'm just going to walk away. But once again, it's one of those things where I say, hey, that's not my circus. So it was whatever. So that year, I was supposed to have three bookings, um, and only had two. And everybody was like, oh man, we got to make sure some of these guys who lost bookings get a chance to like, you know, get that booking back. Cause I think GCW picked up that slot. They saved the and, entire show. Yeah. They, yeah. They saved that show. And, um, and a few people were kind of ticked off about it because it was just like, it was the same people again. But I was like, Hey man, it is what it is. They got to make their money. So I don't know, whatever. Um, but either, either way, um, now that Nova Pro was gone, there's this giant hole in the DMV because there was no, and I'll say it, there was no big indie in the DMV area. Granted, you have Flying V that just now got started. You have Crab Wrestling too, but they're a little bit smaller. And you have people like in Southern Virginia and then like Jersey, but like nothing in that DC, Balt, I mean Maryland, Virginia, Northern Virginia area, which is talented people. There are a lot of talented people here. Um, so um, Gator knew me because I did one Nova Pro show, uh, maybe like two years, two years prior. And he knew when he first met me, he goes, if I ever run a show, that's going to be my guy. Like, that's going to be my guy. So once he found out that I was moving, I wasn't even up here like a day. And he got he got in contact with me. This is what I want to do. Do you are you, or do you want in? I was like, uh, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um Getting in touch, getting him in touch with the, uh, Matt Griffin, the guys with action was easy because I was the I was the common bond between the both of them where Matt Griffin is like, yes, I love O'Shea, you know, because I did some shows with action before then. So it was easy for us to now start using um, 
common like well, I guess common um, common associates with one another. It's like okay, action can bring guys up to DC. DC can bring guys down to action, and we can have this working relationship. This has been great. It's been absolutely great. Um, so, you know, getting a chance to like be in the DMV and really get a chance to apply my craft while getting more training with uh, getting that polishing with, you know, the Ring of Iron developmental system was just an easy decision to make, you know, because it's one of those things of as I get better, I like to think that I make the people around me get better, too. And when that happens, everybody starts to like up their game a little bit, almost like a high tide raises all ships. Um, so being a part of the DMV has been like a, has been a real big piece of me because now everything that I've taken from, you know, working in Georgia, working all around the Southeast, working around the Midwest, now I get to put them in one giant package in the DMV. And, and I don't want to say take over cause that's not, I'm not here to take over anything, but to really like submit myself as a mainstay. So when someone goes, Hey, name, who are the, who are the guys to know when it comes to wrestling t- talent and the DMV, like I want my name at, you know, uh, one of the top three, if not the very first name to come out of your mouth. Yeah. And, and, and to talk about that and certain things solidify that to some degree. So let's talk about that rivalry with Rex Keller. Because the two of you Mm -hmm. have had four, possibly five matches. And there's been a lumberjack match, which was an interesting match in its own right. (laughs) Very, very violent match. Especially with you on the outside. And it was great. And then there was the steel cage match. And Mm -hmm. Jaden Mm -hmm. Newman was involved in that. And so we got to talk about your friendship Mm -hmm. with Jaden Newman. And Jaden Newman has some issues with Gator. And that's the entire action solidification. So... What was that entire rival rivalry like and bringing that friendship into it and bringing that southern element into it as well? Because there's a lot of stuff in play. Right. Well, the, one, of my, one of my biggest things that I wanted to do was to enter for, – for me – and I'm about to show my age, so you're going to have to excuse me right now. Um, there is a – when Outcast won their very first Grammy – um, Andre 3000 got on the mic and goes, the South has something to say. And that has been almost like my call to arms in a sense of, you know, while, you know, you have SUP and while you have SCI and while you have action, there are a, they are, a, there is a crop of talented, talented men and women and everything in between that don't get that type of love because they're in the South, whatever that, whatever the indication that may, that may apply. And I thought it wasn't fair because a lot of times on some shows you see the kind of like the same cats again and again and again. And then when they come down South, it's the same cats again and again and again and again and again. So it was my goal to be like, no nah, man, when I get up here, not only am I going to like wreck shit, but now I'm going to, I'm going to knock the door off the hinges for everyone else who tried to get out of the state, but for whatever reason, they couldn't. So as soon as I got a chance, and, and it wasn't just like, if you're from the South, y'all vouch for it. It's like, no, first of all, you had to be good. And I have to like, know who you are. Um, but um, it was one of those things where I was like, um, Jaden was hands down one of the first people I want to bring. Um, and when I got the opportunity to do it, I'm like, this is what I want to do. And they're like, all right, we trust you. Like, go for it. I'm like, go do it. And so I was like, bet we're going to go do it. And so um, Jaden has come very, very far in, in a, such a short amount of time. And it's scary how good Jaden Newman continues to get. Like he is, he is every day he makes these leaps and bounds and getting better. And like, I'd be damned to say if he ain't better than me. And I'm like, and that's scary because I came good in a very short amount of time. And he is, he is like he is almost lapping me and watching him get better all the time. Um, but in terms of me and bro, man, you want to talk about oil and water? Like that's what we are. We are oil and water where we coexist, but we do not mix well at all. Um, a lot of it may be, may have to do with like ideology, ideology, the way he believes it's like, Oh yeah, you know, everything's just cool and, and groovy. And I'm like, 
nah, man, <laughs> it's it's not, you know, like you're willing to go but so far to get things done. I'm willing to go farther than that to get things done because you live by like you have this invisible line of ethics and, and morals that you have to live by where I don't like I don't care. Like I will slam my mom into the street if it means that like I, if I so I can get ahead like, no, nah, I'll do it like I, I would, you know, and we don't agree in that sense, which is fine. We don't have to agree. But when push comes to shove. Like you're going to wish you had because I'm going to go farther than you. I'm going to do what needs to be done. Like I tell people all the time, like, hey, man, when it comes to like when I wrestle, like you understand, like I wake up every day and I basically dig like two graves when it comes to wrestling. Right. One for one for you and then one for myself. Like I will kill you to prove my point that I'm better than you because, well, what else do I have? Like without it, I got nothing. So if I have to kill myself along with killing you to prove my, my point, so be it. That that's fine with me. It doesn't bother me. Um, and push come to shove, like people ain't ready to handle that. <laughs> it's because I'll tell people, are you in, are you willing to die for it? I hope you are, because I am. And people just like, uh, I don't know. And that's where a lot of differences lie. And there's two instances in prime time that I think really highlight that. You know, Jaden Newman being involved in that steel cage with the zip ties, mm -hmm. definitely a big issue. And you got mad heat for it. And it was brilliant. Mm -hmm. I was actually sitting next mm -hmm. to your friends during that match who came up. So I was sitting right next to them. We were all like clapping and yeah. so, so, so clearly I have allegiances. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a biased interviewer. And then yeah. the second one was at Butch for a score with Billy. Mm -hmm. And just cutting that promo at the start of the show. And then just staring down Lolo. Ooh, that was that was vicious. And we could tell Lolo Man. was not happy with you. I could tell you that. Here's the thing, man. You you don't have to be happy with me, but at the end of the day, Lolo's a businesswoman. She's a businesswoman. So was Gator. Like Gator is a businessman, you know. Um, and it's just one of those things. Well, I mean, they're they're they are both business people. Let me rephrase that. They are both business people. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to the dollar. It all comes down to the dollar. That's just it. You can have all the good intentions in the world. You can have all the great moments in the world, but great moments don't pay bills. Great moments don't pay your talent. You know, but you know what does pay your talent? You know what puts butts in those seats? Me. Like I put butts in those seats. So while Butch, for, Butch versus Gore was such a, a monumental thing and it needed to happen. Let me get that straight. That show needed to happen. It did. Just like even though it didn't happen, how for the culture needed and still needs to happen. Effie's Big Gay Brunch, too. You might as well throw in there. Right. Effie's, yes. Right. Effie's Big Gay Brunch. These shows need to happen and this it, this isn't this case of well um uh uh well if if they have their own show like no that's not the point it's just you have this group of people that get marginalized constantly and they don't get their chance to shine because either it becomes this issue of it, it's who you know or you become a sideshow like i'm not a number i am not a sideshow I am a talented individual who just so happens to be black. And, and let's, my, let's the color I think, of my, I think it's good my to interject. My sexuality means nothing to that. But, it, it's, but it, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get back to it's that. It's good to interject the right issue. now. For, for those who don't know, we yeah. were also speaking about that entire incident with that racist thing. And we're not going to rehash it. But clearly, yeah. there, there are people in the wrestling community who will not train black wrestlers or will treat and black wrestlers him. horribly. There are people who will treat gay wrestlers horribly billy when he cut that promo at the inventational the, what, yes. I, I can't say the entire acronym but it was prime time you know and what he was saying yes. and even on my podcast when he was speaking about it there's problems in locker rooms still russell rogue was just on he yes. was explaining problems yeah. and i don't want to rehash all this but i would imagine that there's some problems with you you know i have a disability and i know for a fact that I can't prove discrimination, but I know what it smells like. I know what it looks like. I understand. 
what it seems like. I can't prove it, but I know what it looks like because body language does not lie. So so just to talk about when shows need to happen, and just because a show happens... Shows like that need to happen. And just because a show happens doesn't mean that another show can happen. That's just a straight wrestling show. There's nothing wrong with either one of those. I want to make that right. crystal clear right. for everybody right. watching and listening. Yeah, but. before before Twitter sets itself on fire. Anyway, uh, so yeah, those shows like that need to happen, without a doubt. The fact of the matter is, is the fact that while that show needed to happen, I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care. I didn't care that a show needed to happen because – at the end of the day, like I'm, I'm a businessman. My business is very good. I'm very, very good at what I do. And I felt slighted that all of a sudden I was put into a, 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 a match that honestly wasn't fitting of me. That's not knocking Billy. Billy's a great competitor. But let's be for real. Like, I'm bigger than Billy. I'm stronger than Billy. I'm faster than Billy. I'm more talented than Betty. Billy. I'm a better speaker than Billy. I'm a better wrestler than Billy. I make more money than Billy. I have more better matches than Billy. Like, this wasn't an issue of who you are. This is an issue of what you are. You can't stand that you you don't have a you don't have a leg to stand on, my dude. Like, like you like you don't. And for them to be like, oh man, you know. You know, Billy's going to get this title shot. I'm like, that's fine. Billy can get this title shot. And Billy wanted me to take him seriously. And I showed him exactly what happens when I take you seriously. I will literally and figuratively beat the pants off of you in front of you, your friends, your family, your family of friends, friends of friends, and then complete strangers. Why? Not because it was Butch versus Gore. It's because you are coming after something that I worked very, very hard for. And once again, I am willing to die for my art. Unfortunately, Billy isn't. (laughs) And to talk about your next competitor, which is supposedly AC Mack. And AC Mack can shit talk. He can shit talk and he might have you beat on that. I have to say it, but it's going to be one hell of a match. So... Here's the thing. AC's a lot of things, but AC ain't stupid. He ain't stupid. He AC works better when he knows that everything is in his favor. You mean you're going to come into my house on my show and then take my title from me just because you have this little thing in your pocket saying you get a match anytime you want to? That's perfectly fine. But I will send him back to Atlanta back to the swats of where he's from <laughs> with an L and without another title. Because I tell people all the time, you want a t- you want a title match against me, that's fine. You only get one because AC Mac is a champion over an action and Southern Underground. I told him you get one because you earned it. After that, you better bring something else to the table to lose because I don't fight for free. Simple as that. So unless he's going to put them titles up for grabs too, we can have a chamber as champion. I ain't trying to hear him right now. So AC Mack can stand in the SWATs of Atlanta and kind of do what he got to do. That's fine because AC Mack's dope when he's in Atlanta. You take him out, well, he ain't as big as he like thinks he is. And now, and now to table primetime because obviously primetime has some amazing competitors. And without a doubt, I think you're going to have some of the most amazing matches when we get back. You know, you have yeah. everybody from... Effie is in play to, to a whole bunch of other people, and who knows what they're going to do. And when IWTV gets their title onto prime time, I'm waiting for you to get a shot at that because I think that'd be amazing. Yeah. Especially that against Warhorse, be... you know, round three or four yeah. at this point. Uh, three? It'll be round three. Round three for that one. Um, and we've always had multi mans. We've never had a, we've never had a legit one one on one. And I want to see it. I think a lot of people want to see it because I think it's going to be a hell of a match. I really think it's going to be a hell yeah. of a match. Yeah. Any, any chance? Any time I get a chance to step in the ring, with Warhorse, I, I, I smile because my head is. We're going to hurt each other, and I'm all about that. Like, yeah, come on, give me that good stuff. <laughs> and now, and now there there are two more promotions I want to speak about. One of them is Flying V. It. Actually, three, Flying V and P-A-W, and I can't remember the rest of it. P-A-W-D, yes. Yeah. It's it's okay, P-A, yes. (laughs) 
Let's, 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 I tell you what, let's call it Fight Club. Yeah, let's Fight Club. It, there we go. Club. There you go. So, 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 and you've only wrestled, I think, in Fight Club once, from my understanding, because they're once, yes, brand new. Once, yes. You had the wild card, and that was cool with like the Uno cards, and and um, turn the light up. Turn that light up for me. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I'm trying to get some more light in here. <laughs> technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> so, so you only had the um, one in there, and that was for their title, which was very cool with Trisha mm-hmm. Dorr, and you kind of screwed Mr. Grimm, and he just wrestled for AW Dark, which was also really cool, and so a lot of people mm-hmm. are that, and you kind of screwed him over, which I thought was funny. So, so <laughs> what was it like wrestling for them and really being in that promotion? Because I thought that was a great show, and... For those who don't know, Nyla Rose was actually at that show as yep. a yep, band, yep, yep. which was great. And, and it's just one of those things that DC has to offer. Yes. Um, like I said, I tell people all the time, I was like, DC is becoming so, uh, just having some of the best wrestling that chances are you've probably never heard of. Um, getting a chance to work um, with, uh, with Fight was great um, because I was a last minute addition. Um, one of their guys got sick, um, and he couldn't and, and couldn't work. I was going to go to the show anyway. I, said, hey, I was going to sit in the crowd anyway, just kind of do whatever. And um, they called me up and said, "Hey, man, like, do you want in?" And I was like, "If, if it's wrestling, yeah. The fact you're in DC, yeah." Um, so they really gave me a chance to shine and kind of and kind of do my thing. And I wasn't really prepared for the amount of ovation i should say that was when i get when i walked in um because we didn't tell anybody i was complete surprise to everybody bunch of us so like the reaction yeah so like the reaction we got was really was it was real it was it was real it was just this moment of holy shit this is happening and um it felt good It, it felt really good um that's something i miss a lot with all this going down is that that is uh is that pop you know that 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 pop. I've been YouTubing a lot of uh, like sports crowd reactions just because I just miss that 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 pop in the air. Like I miss it. So I, I every once in a while I'm like I'm just gonna watch like buzzer beaters for the next half hour or something like that. So um, <laughs> um, working for them was great. We we've been in talks to do it again real soon. I hope so. Um, whenever all this stuff you know finally finally calms down and and DC can start putting on shows again. Um, you know, this really put a cramp in a lot of people's styles. Um, March, April, May, and June were going to be like really, really dope for me. I had a lot of stuff lined up that, you know, I was told it'll happen, but I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Well, I have a funny story about Fight Club. That poetry guy who did is in the ring and started the show. Yeah, my friend from college just was in a poetry battle with him up in Baltimore. Really? So Steve Willis. Oh, shout out to Steve Willis right there. So small world. <laughs> but having said all that, I do want to talk about Flying V because you're sort of yes. a mainstay there as well, and that's a really yeah. cool promotion. Yeah. And they're doing some cool yes. stuff there. And I like the fact that yeah, they're yeah, around yeah. and. It's just a it's a it's a great promotion, and I think they run maybe yes five or six shows a year now. Yeah, I think it's gonna be every quarter. So you're looking at one show every two to three months. So about yeah four six shows, kind of depending on how you know the year works or roughly around there. But every every show they've had, man, has been a complete sellout. Um, just like just like um prime time, prime time's bad six for six. Every show comes down there is a sellout, which it, which I tell people all the time that should tell you something. Right there, that you have these two shows who are selling out. You know, granted, they're, they're all like thousand plus, but I'm like, they're they're selling out. You know, like Primetime puts on a show has four or five hundred people. Flying V takes over a theater that sits two fifty, and they sell it out, and the place sounds like it's a thousand people. You know, um, Flying V's great. Like big shout out to Jason um, and those guys over there for you know. For me, it's one thing where I always say like, you know. Just having a wrestling show is great, man. But when you add the type of production that Flying V puts on top of it, man, it, it's it's literally icing on the cake because a a great wrestling show becomes even better if that's even possible just from the sheer production value alone. And seeing it on TV is one thing, right? 
but seeing it live is something completely different because now you sing as it happens. You're like, whoa, this is great. So, um, like Flying V is really, really like, uh, is, is my second home just because of the fact that one, they, they see what I do in prime time. So they already know what they were, they already know what they're getting. This isn't anything. It's like, oh, we don't, they already know. And they, they don't try to, um, like gate me back. So, hey, man, go do what you do. Like, if there's anybody in this locker right now that we are not worried about, it's you. Go forth. And I'm like, <laughs> you got to tell me twice. <laughs> and I think one of their best shows was almost Maryland's Homecoming. That was a really cool show. Mm-hmm. Free wrestling show. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Silver Springs. Oh, that was so good. So, so interesting. Good. And then and afterwards with, like, the uh, – I don't know if you stuck around. And I stuck around. And I was listening to, like, that, like, silence, like, DJ thing and oh, it was great. Yeah. It was it was amazing. That was that was that was nuts because I was like, what are they listening to right now? And they're like, yo, man, this is a DJ playing in headphones. So I'm like, it was it. I was able to get a set of headphones and listen. It's one thing to hear it, but it's something awesome just to kind of take them off and listen to everyone else jam like in unison to the same song and no one else can hear it. I'm like, this is nuts. <laughs> so 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 just to give people background, the wrestling was in almost like a theater. And in a, in a nice yeah. theater, and Maryland University of Maryland has like, like I think like they have like ten theaters, and this wrestling thing was in yes. one of them. You come out, and then you have all these people because it's their homecoming, and you have all these people, yep. and it's like you went in, and this wasn't happening to the show. Ninety minutes later, or an hour later, and then the landscape's completely different, and it's just one of those crazy things that could only happen on a college campus. And then, and so yep. it's a really cool thing. And yep, I yep. Really and, I, and and it's that's that's one of the best things is like I love being on a college campus. Like it's so much fun, um, just because you just get that you just get that vibe being on a college campus. So that was that was like I said that was a really that was a really fun time. And then even when we did the Silver Springs Theater, um, you know, in Maryland, that was I, I thought you couldn't top that show you did University of Maryland. And then they go off and they top it. <laughs> Very cool, very cool. And then the final place I want to talk about is Beyond. And you only mm-hmm. had one match there. Again, yeah. Matt Mikowski. Yeah, yeah. What's cool about Beyond is so, that that's 10 years in the making, and it's just a massive yes. platform, just a massive platform. And I know we're going slightly backwards, yes. but... Yeah, no, 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 you're good. It's, it's all the, the same, same realm, so you're good. Um, I wanted to be a part of that show from the get go from uh, for, since I started wrestling. I, and that's one of the things of where it was one of those stops I knew I had to make regardless of how far I go. I, I had to make that stop. And um, when they started the discovery gauntlet type deal, I didn't think much about it just because I didn't know what they were looking for. Um, to me, beyond is almost like a, almost like a, a giant all-star game. And in it's a, in a, not not so much of the level of like PWG, but still like and when it comes to the East Coast, at least the Northwest and the Northeast, I should say, like it's it's a who's who, you know, especially some of the names that come roll through there on the regular, you know. So when I when I uh, when I met the guys from beyond back in June at a GCW show, they was like, hey, man, stay in contact with me, stay in contact with me when to get you up here. And. And so you tell how long that that just that whole conversation had to take from June till November um, when I got there. Like, that's how long. I mean, you're looking at what, five, six months uh, almost. And um, so it was like, hey, man, just kind of keep this underneath the hat. And I was like, yeah, man, no problem. No problem. I didn't know what to expect. And then all of a sudden my name pops up beyond. And next, you know, my Twitter goes absolutely bananas <laughs> about what's happening. Um, and it's one of the few times I was actually nervous. And not so much about the match, but it was the fact that, like, this is beyond, you know, beyond's a big deal. And so now it's one of these things of it's like, OK, if there's ever been a time to have to produce on such a level, this is it. This is the time to produce. There's, there's no more. Oh, man, I kind of had a bad like, no, nah, man, this is a one and done. So you got to make sure you, you nail this thing. And um I like to think I nailed it. Um, you know, I wasn't expecting the the ovation I got. I wasn't expecting the kaiju chant. I sure as hell wasn't expecting a please come back chant afterwards. 
Um, but at the same time, it was um, like I said, at the end of the day, I'm still a humble guy. So anytime like I, anytime those kind of moments happen, uh, that's when I kind of like let my wall down for a minute, and I kind of like soak that in. You know, I, I take that in. I let that moment register. Um, I, I let that moment kind of like speak for itself because that that's a big deal. <laughs> And I think that that speaks massive volume of who you are and where you are going, because in many ways, Beyond is a bar to set and it's a hurdle to overcome if you're involved mm-hmm. in the show and brought in and you're not a regular like Chris Dickinson or Solo or, you know, Anthony right. Kane or Josh Briggs. And those guys live around the, the area and Solo lives around there as well. So it's it's a big deal if they're bringing you out there. And so right. now, and now I just want to table all of this. And I did table something before, and I guess it's not a few minutes, but <laughs> COVID nineteen has definitely wrecked every wrestling component. Yes, it has. It's it's decimated the entire wrestling world as as an entity. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just curious. And you said that, that basically this is this is an evolution standpoint, and which that I've evolved yes. as a podcaster. I've evolved as a writer. I've evolved on social media, and a lot of wrestlers are starting to as well. And so I'm just mm-hmm. curious, where do you think all the chips are going to land? Because when I was speaking to Gator, maybe maybe a month ago, you know, certain promotions aren't going to be coming back from this. Certain wrestlers aren't going to be coming back from this. Certain fans right. aren't be coming back from this. Uh, and and this is and but and this is going and this is kind of where I was talking about before when how you are going to adapt to adversity is really going to tell the story of who you are altogether. Um, this pandemic that's been going around has really showed you who people, who people really are. Um, it's, it's one thing to put on this face for like, you know, social media and, and this, that, and the other. Um, but at the end of the day, like, you know, people are going to find out who you are, you know, and we found a few, like we found people who are just straight up assholes, um, because this this pandemic, um, on and so it's now when this is all said and done, it bec- it really becomes who's left standing. Um, does this suck? Yeah. Does this hurt? Of course it does. Um, and will this take time? Yes, it, it most definitely will. You know, like this is unprecedented. No one, no one banks on. You know, when I woke up the day before, we're like, hey, you know, feel like. Fuck about pandemic's coming. We better go ahead and start canning some peaches. Like, no, no one does that. Well, I take that back. There's a few people do it. <laughs> but even still, like you don't you it's one of the things where you can't prepare for something like this, you know? But how you how you adjust, how you overcome, how you you how you're going to strive to get through this is what's going to tell the tale. Um, do I think that wrestling will be better for this? I think it will. Because now <laughs> now you now the fat's being cut away the shitty promoters the shitty bookers the shitty wrestlers the shitty fans you know those places are that's my um now now these now these things are getting washed away because it's like we you don't have the time for it anymore you know so so now all of a sudden you know these these wrestlers who's on the fringe who now wrestled only but so amount of shows a month well guess what now there are no shows so guess what happens to you you go bye bye the the wrestling shows that couldn't even pull a profit because they just are shitty business models or whatever well guess what now they go bye bye because you can't afford to run anymore you know but some of these shows will still be there like flying v they will still be there. Um, um, Primetime Pro Wrestling, they will still be there. Beyond will still be there because they have con- – They had, even in a short amount of time that Primetime has been alive. And it I'll exclude Beyond. Very to much. me, Beyond's a, like a super, super indie in, in my eyes. But Flying V and Primetime have put on such – and even Action, I'll, I'll have them in there too – have – have such a good catalog and their shows have been consistent across the board. It's not just one day we have like great wrestling and the other is kind of like in the shits. Like no, every show is a sellout, 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 great show, great show, great show, great show, where you can't die. 
because it's, people are going to want it. And if you decide that, hey, you know, we're just going to close the door, that's fine. Somebody's going to come up in your place. And that's what's happening. That's what's going to happen with this pandemic where all these wrestlers are going to go up by the wayside. Cool. Well, guess what? Somebody's going to come and take your spot. Like nothing's nothing's guaranteed. Nothing's ever going to be given to you. Somebody's going to come for your spot. And so I look at the wrestlers who are above me or doing or, you know, kind of the place where I want to be. I'm working my tail off even when I can't go to a gym. I'm still working because for me, it's going to be like, hey, I'm coming for you. And the minute you slip, the minute you step up, you, I mean, the minute you step off and you trip or something like that in the past of span of three, four months for whatever we've been doing this, I'm, my, all, all my days are blended together. Um, I'm coming for you because you, 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 you didn't take advantage of what was happening. And now look at you. So it's, it's, it's going to be one of those things where it's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting once crowds come back. And and I'm just curious what your entire take is on wrestling coming back to normal because there's three things really in play with this. There's the idea that the establishments have to be comfortable with hosting because a lot of these things are in gyms or they're in bars. You know, prime time is in a bar. And then on right. top of that, those staff have to feel comfortable and then the wrestlers need to feel comfortable. And I would also say that the fans need to be comfortable. So a lot of these shows can't run mm-hmm. without tickets being sold. And so I'm just curious how you feel about that and when you think or what's going to be put in place, I should say, to ensure those things, especially from the fan uh, perspective, because you, know, you have 500 seats right. in prime time. You know, everybody's on top of each other. It's not so easy anymore for people to feel so comfortable to say, let's get back into the pan here. Right. Um. A lot of it is fans first, fans and performers first. Um, so what, with, with that being said, it's going to be something to where you're not going to be able to have as many guys on your show. You know, some places run like 12 matches. Well, you can't, you're looking at at least 24 people. That's it. That's if you're not going to run a, a multi man or a tag match. So now, because of necessity's sake, let it be health reasons or financial reasons, you can't run 10, mat, 10, 12 matches anymore. Maybe your show's going to have to be six or seven. Thank God. You know, for what it's worth. In terms of, like, the fans, you're going to have to look after them. So guess what? You're going to have, you're not going to be able to take in so much money because, well, now you can't fit as many people as you used to. A uh, building that, let's say now, let's just say, I was for easy math, holds 600 people. Well, if people got to be six feet apart, you're looking at what one person for every three spaces now. So now all of a sudden you're looking at less than half, you know, what? Yeah. One third of 600, a hundred people, a <laughs> hundred people. Yeah. One third. Yeah. A hundred people. And I'm like, that's, well, I'm sorry. 200, yeah, 200 people. I'm sorry. We're probably that looking at, at half for these shows just to be can right on a, on, a, on a good day half on a good day half you know that's gonna that's gonna hurt that's gonna hurt the bottom line which is gonna hurt the boys payday it's gonna hurt who gets on the show so when that happens guess what it's no longer either they're gonna pick somebody who's not as trained not as experienced because they work cheap or you know you're not gonna have that many matches anymore but we've already discussed but how this pandemic's coming through. It's going to start – it's literally wiping the slate clean. So now why would you want a, sh- a, a non-experienced, not that good wrestler on your show that's not going to bring you any money? Now it's just like now you have to br- – now you're going to have to bring in quality people. But you can't bring in all the quality guys anymore because, well, you're only going to bring in about half the, half the house now. So it, I tell people all the time. I was like, hey, man. Cheap talent isn't quality, isn't always quality. Let me rephrase that, because that quality talent is going to understand he's quality talent and he knows it becomes cheap. <laughs> but cheap talent, I mean, cheap talent isn't quality and quality talent isn't cheap. Simple as that. Just, just, just so simple as that. Um, so it's it's a, it's a trickle down effect. You know, you have to look after the protection of the fans. You have to look at protection protection of the workers. You know, and it's all going to come down to these promoters and bookers. Like, what's more important? The health and safety of the guys working for you and the fans who are paying money to see you or is all about the bottom line. 
we're going to find out really, really quickly. We, we are, we are, we are going to find out. I think we're going to leave it at that, but I definitely want to give you an opportunity to promote yourself. I know you got shirts. I don't know what else you got going on as far as merchandise. <laughs> where can people buy that shit? Because, you know, yeah, man. wrestlers, wrestlers, and I'm saying it, I've been saying it for a while now, you know, wrestlers need that money. And right now they're not yeah. wrestling. And you right. have don't the financial get, don't means. Don't twist it. Just because just I bought a house doesn't mean wrestling bought it. So <laughs> wrestling didn't buy this house. Exactly. <laughs> I was planning to buy a house, you know, sometime in July and August myself. And that's all messed up now. Hey, man. Honestly, if you're going to get a house, now it's time to do it. Interest rates are stupid low. And it's a buyer's market because no one else is buying. I'm fair fair you, enough. I'm you. Right now, <laughs> because everything is so messed up. In our right, economy right. and all sorts of stuff. Best course of action sometimes is to just sit tight and sit pretty. But having said that, and the reason why I bring this up is because you aren't wrestling. And you definitely need support from that. So how can people buy your shirts? And how can people buy your technical difficulties? Still with me? Technical difficulties. It's live. I love this. And awkward turtle, awkward turtle, awkward turtle. I think we lost O'Shea. I think we lost O'Shea. I don't know if you can hear me. This is not good. Come in Houston. While we wait, while we wait. No worries, no worries. We're just gonna go live again. Just give me like one second. Oh, hey. we're still we're still live. We're still live. We're we're good. We're good. We're still live, everybody. Hey. I oh, love technology. Cool. This is amazing. This is fantastic. So anyway, as I was saying before, just to reiterate the question for technical difficulties and the awkward turtles going back in. <laughs> what I was saying is that obviously if your wrestlers aren't wrestling and you want to support them, where can they buy your t-shirt? Where can they follow you on social media? Where can they check out what you're doing? You know, how can they engage with you? Hopefully in a nice way. <laughs> um, the, the easiest way to can like, um, for, for merch is, is going to be what a maneuver.net. Um, there's a bunch of those guys are, have always been good to me. Um, local guys, well, I say local, but they're out of Nashville. I kind of have a bias. So it is what it is. Um, uh, um, so they handle all my t-shirts. Um, the video is, is a logo that you see that you don't want on a t-shirt. They have hoodies. They have baseball tees. They have onesies. They have ch children's. They have women's t-shirts, tank tops, like whatever you can think of, like they have it. Um, everything else is pretty much going to be with me. Um, so like I, I have a new eight by tens that I've kind of been, I've been using this time to kind of like revamp my entire lineup uh, of merch. So I have wristbands, um, buttons, like uh, Pollyanna, um, my little character buttons. I love those things. I call them mini O'Shea's. They're pretty dope. Um, like I said, brand new, brand new, um, uh, uh, brand new eight by tens with new graphics on it. This, this, that, and the other, um, all the t-shirts, um, even the ones that were supposed to debut in WrestleMania, but they never got a chance to do it for WrestleMania for obvious reasons. Um, but if, if you want to get in touch with me, um, usually it's going to be um, uh, at all damn day O'Shea, one word. Um, also on Instagram at all day, it's going to be at all damn day O'Shea, but it's going to be underscore after every word. Um, I tell people all the time, like I'm on Facebook. You can try to find me on Facebook. You can even try to 
add me on Facebook. But if I don't know you or we haven't talked, chances are I'm not going to add you to Facebook. Um, it's nothing personal. It's just how I do it. <laughs> but other than that, you know, for the most part, I'm a pretty approachable guy, despite what you may see on Twitter and on like, you know, IWTV and all that good stuff. Um, but I tell people, Tom, hey, man, just talk to my human And I'll talk to you like human being. That's pretty much about it. Well, I've been saying it, and I'm going to continue to say it, and I just said it again, and I can't reiterate it enough. One of the things right now in society is that if you have extra money and you're in a good position and you can go and you like O'Shea and you like what he does in the ring, whether he's wrestling for primetime or Flying V or another promotion, and you want to support him, one of the best ways how to do that is by buying a T-shirt. Now, if you're hurting economically, you know, one of the things that, and I hope you agree with me, that don't put your family at risk. You know, put, put you and your family first, but unless you don't have electricity or internet, there's no reason not to follow him on Twitter, not check out yes. his shirts, you know, like a tweet, watch IWTV. You know, when you watch IWTV, and yes. definitely supports them, and then that money gets trickled down. And that can make the difference between a promotion surviving and a promotion not right now which is a place where you can work. So exactly. that means to keep in mind as well that right. indirect every, help every, is useful. So definitely yes, those things, yes, but also yes. engaging on Twitter, liking a tweet, retweeting a tweet, those things really help because that's a big deal. Checking out your YouTube page, just your YouTube page, you've got stuff on there as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think I think that's, so, that's perfect, unless you have anything else you YouTube, got to say. Okay, go okay, first. Um, support in, support independent wrestling, man. Um, you know, it's not always like you said before, always monetary. Um, but a simple follow, a retweet, a like, uh, a, 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 a thumbs up on a YouTube page or a video, it goes a long way in terms of how things get seen, algorithms, all that good stuff. It's something that I've been looking at, like you know, more and more, trying to be better than the next guy. Um, wrestling is my business. Unfortunately, my business had a standstill. Um, but I'm blessed enough to have a, a family and a shoot job that um that has really you know provided for me and mine during this during this time. Um, but once this thing is back over with and we start wrestling again, man, I'm going to fuck some body up, and I can't wait. That's how that's perfect. That's how we're ending right there because I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Thanks for having me, dude. I really do appreciate it.